All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and uh, get this ball rolling here. A little recap of the two trades I took today. Um, ABVC and uh, the other one was BTTX, I believe. Um, so, yeah, we're going to go through those and just kind of get a feel of what was going on with these two stocks. This, guys, is important why I tell you, you know, waiting for setups is very, very crucial. Chasing stocks is something you do not want to do if you don't know what i mean by waiting for a setup i don't know what to tell you you got to do some reading got to do some studying ask somebody for some clarity but something that you never want to do now this thing here with abbc you probably woke up to you know either you know news it about it if you did like your little some of you guys who don't have um brokers who let you trade certain hours may have woken up to like it gapping up like 200 300 percent uh for the day and weren't able to take care of the ride, you know, or take take part of the ride. You know, if you're one of those people who don't have Webull or, or you know, Moomoo, um, you know, <laughs> sorry for you. Just kind of sit back and just, you know, watch it. Um, but, yeah, so pretty much, if you kind of tell here about a chart, this right here was pretty much pre-market opening bell. Now, I was able to get in at, you know, the $9 range because I'm up you know, during pre-market, I'm looking for moves to the market. So when an alert like that goes off, I'm looking at level two right away and seeing if I'm going to plot entries and exits or deciding what strategy I'm going to take. Let's take a look at that alert. That was the very first one that went off today. And it was on the watch list. First, it was the first one on the back burners of the watch list. So I had ample time to kind of look at that thing and decide what I wanted to do. So boom, ABVC, it was alerted at 554. From this point on, it just kept running and running and running. And if you were looking at level two at that time, you would have seen the orders coming in, flooding and flooding in very, very fast. Mostly because this was a very, very short float stock. Um, the reasons for it running, unknown. I mean, it was just pure volume beginning of pre-market. So when I'm usually you know, looking at those type of stocks, I usually, I usually trade the, st the strategy that allows me to, to ride that, you know, little wave and get out um I, i'm not going to cover all that in the detail it was you know we'll be here all day but pretty much that's what i did on there and so i got in got on it got out and then good thing i did because look what happened this thing completely dumped now even if i wouldn't have you know got out like at the peak if i would have got out you know somewhere around that candle i would have still been good because i got in at like nine i got in on this little dip here um this little dip here which we'll talk about dips and stuff in a minute but anyways this little dip here i got in um and it just shot on up and like i said if i would have stayed in with the pullback i'd have been fine because i got in at a really good time which is ideal now how would you know that you're getting in at a good time on the entry and the exit i mean you at that point you want to look at your indicators i know this thing was pulling back here so i wanted to get in like right right beside the 70 of the RSI because I know that even if it was to come down and still you know turn over the MACD that once it hit the RSI again it's going to curl up again so I'm willing to take that risk to reward during pre-market and watching the way the orders were coming in during level two I was like perfect let me go ahead and you know dab a little bit in there and just let this thing ride I did 500 shares and then just shot up and you know so it went from there um quick little seven thousand dollars on that because I was able to get out at like nineteen dollars and 75 cents so that was good that was a good trade um, then it just drops. So if you were one of those ones chasing, this is exactly why I tell you guys to wait for a setup. And if you had you wait for it to turn over and showed you something, you would have seen that this was a pure pump and dump. And let's get into it a little bit more. Let's say if you did wait, right, you would have seen this trade probably wasn't worth playing all day unless you were trying to short it because one, it was showing no strength, no strength. Even as it was turning over, no strength, no strength. Now, obviously, here is going to show something. You're going to see some movement here on the beginning hours of here, 6 o'clock, because other brokerages are opening. And obviously, you know, I knew this was kind of a fake signal because of the time frame that this happened. You probably could jump in and ride that wave a little bit for a couple of dollars if you wanted to. Boom, 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 boom. But don't stay in there. Um, why? Because it's not showing you a setup yet. You got to remember, this is this is like cutting it off like and starting anew again because you have other brokerages opening. Now, these traders are going to tell you how they feel about the stock. And clearly here as well, they felt it was 
not worth you know longing. So you waited for this setup here, you'd have been fine. Keep in mind of the time frames, guys. Um, that's very, very important. Yes, it's still bullish because it's above the value weighted average price. But keep in mind the stock is already up like 300%. It's going to be well over its value weighted average price pretty easily. Um, and I hear this is a clear sign of just, you know, this day bearish throughout the rest of the day. I didn't touch this stock the rest of the day. It was on no point. As soon as I seen this, boom, bearish territory. I don't care what's going to happen in pre-market. I'll watch it a little bit in pre-market. It did much of nothing. It halted for a little bit. Did nothing. Still within a setup. Nothing. Nothing. And this thing just died out all day. So congrats to you guys who did put something. I mean, it was an easy put. But, yeah, if you're one of those traders who try to do, like, a, a gap and go strategy on this, and, I mean, that's fine if you know how to trade those. Um, I know that little gap and go strategy is something that I was, you know, taught from like youtube years ago when i first started trading out and it never worked out for me um in between that and learning like patterns and stuff like that it just it, it never worked so i'm showing you guys how you know what the time frame is for a pattern to set up it's not you know three minutes within uh you know within a trade that's not a you know that's not a pattern there um you know anything like that this isn't even a pattern because this isn't even considered a pattern here why because nothing has rolled over yet there's no setup but most of the places you look at reviews and or you look at you know guru stuff like that they're just teaching you the part about the chart they're not teaching nothing about indicators and how to read them but understand that you need to have that time frame play out in order for you to have an actual set there um and this would have prevented you from either chasing or getting burnt on this stock if you knew what to look for. Okay. So I'm not going to repeat the, you know, I'm not going to beat a dead horse. You guys understand how that worked out. And this is pretty much how, that, how I played this, you know, this trade. Got in at, you know, 936 and got out at 1975. Got 500 shares. So that was a good little 150 something percent gain straight in the morning i'm up seven thousand straight in the morning great i could have easily call it a day but as i was watching throughout the day i took a little break and then came back and the alerts were still going off then i jumped into that bttx alert um i don't believe bttx was on the, the watch list uh bkkt i was on the watch list which also did good too so hopefully you guys banked on that but bttx had a volume spike at 1970 or 1950 that was like the first alert about it um, and that was well into the day. Yeah, well into here. And then, you know, pull back, a little bit more, pull back, pull back, pull back. So it was just basically bouncing here, um, you know, each turn that it gets. So nothing really too big of a breakout. What should interest you here with this trade and what interests me, which made me get in it, um, was during that break. Now, go back and look at the Facebook group of the profits I posted. I didn't get into that thing until about 2290 or 2260 something, like 2269, I think it was. But the reason why is because a clear indication of this being strong. I mean, it was already it already crossed over into bullish territory, right? So that's great. Now, the next thing that I'm looking for here at this point is going to be a new high for it to break the, the pre-market high. Once I see that, I know that this thing has a potential more than likely to keep running. Um, or at least for, you know, a certain amount of time. So I'm going to feel very confident about taking that trade with, a, with you know, with the proper risk management. And, you know, of course, it eventually did that. It broke it. And, you know, I got in that bad boy at like 2260, which was like right around here. And I just wrote it up a little bit. It wasn't too much. It was like a 20% gain. Um, you know, got out like 27, close to the peak. Uh, not too high. I think it went all the way to like 29. Um, and then, you know, I just got out. So I'm not trying to get too greedy. I was just looking for a quick one to two dollar move, um, which was again a good you know percentage change there. So and then this was just kind of you know choppy throughout the whole rest of the day. So I mean to kind of give you some clarity on this one, as a bullish trader, breaking a new high a day and having strong buy signals is going to have me be more attracted to the stock than any other. And this one, you know, with this alert, it just kind of kept it on the radar for me um you know it wasn't nothing like fast momentum but it had good trend um so it was kind of easy to keep an eye on it and just have it on the back burner see and, and it was halted at one point as well too so 
that's another thing. What, you know, it, it was halted like $16. So obviously eyes are going to be looking at it. It's breaking a new high. Eyes are still looking at it. Let me go ahead and get in, get a little piece of this. And then it got halted again. Um, and then, you know, went ahead and get out. It's, it's pretty simple. Um, it takes, you know, you got to give the stock some time to play out too. A lot of you guys think this is like quick, 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 quick. It's not. You give it, you know, give it 5, 10, 15 minutes, depending on the time frame that you're trading for. Trading on. Some people use like the 200 MA. Um, trade on 15 minute, tw four hour levels. That's fine, guys. Just make sure you're doing your, you know, risk to reward, you know, properly. Okay. Um, so that's pretty much it for the day. Um, that one was a pretty good trade there too. Um, you know, got in and got out. Like I said, got a little piece of the pie and call it a day. So this was a great way to start off November 1st. Not too bad. Other alerts looked okay. I mean, OCGN, I mean, that bad boy was a good little climber today. Um, oops, my bad. Ample opportunity to make money there. So don't be greedy. I mean, get in, get your percent, get your dollar amount, whatever you're shooting for, and go, guys. Next trade will come. Okay. Um, yeah, this one broke highs, rode up all the way up to 14. That's a good, you know, dollar fifty move there. That's if you want to just to follow that rule. And again, the strategies that I'm trading, guys, I have like four or five different strategies that I trade. Um, so we could be looking at the same stock and be thinking two different things. Just understand that it's just it's my strategy. The way I trade is, you know just how I do it and it fits me and I show you guys in the course how to do that on your own how to you know I show you my strategy what I trade and I show you how to develop your own so you know use that to your advantage um, the more you can do that the better you're gonna be trust me especially with momentum stocks alright so that's pretty much it for the day hopefully you guys got to get a little recap on this and kind of see what I was seeing and of course you know hindsight is 2020 go back replay you know go pull these stocks up use trading view you know all the links are in the description use trading view Go ahead and, you know, hit that replay button, play it in real time, see how you can, you know, predict the movement of the stock. Of course, you're going to still want to have things like level two, or you may even have your own indicators and, you know, and, and isolators there to help you out with your trading strategy. Either way, you got to practice it, okay? But um, hopefully this was a good recap. This is a great way to start off November, um, you know, with almost a, a 2K profit. I'm sorry, 10K profit, actually over 10K. We're about 11, almost 12 almost 12,000 up. So that's good. But anyways, this will be a quick little video for y'all until the next stuff come up. Those guys are in the course. We got some stuff to go over and we're going to call it a day. All right, you guys stay green.